Jamie is an actress, Aaron is a writer. When they get together, skies couldn't be brighter. They're best friends from back in the day, and they always have a lot to say. From life in the biz to why pop goes fizz to just about everything out there that is so settled back if you would. It's Janie and Aaron does Hollywood. Hello, Aaron. It's nice to see you here. It's good to see you. It's been too long. It's been too long. Can I? <laughs> I didn't even know we had started recording. I'll look over and you like have this little <laughs> glint in your eye. That was obviously you'd started the recording. Device. I know. I like to be sneaky. You did. You kind of tricked us into it. Well, I, are you ready for another great show? I'm. I'm always ready. This is that part where Jamie and Aaron do some catching up. Well, let's get this thing started. You know what? I need to tell our listeners what you're wearing. You're wearing a striped hoodie and plaid shorts. But keep in mind, it's a little chilly in here. <laughs> but also, he's not auditioning for a, chel- a children's television show. He's just wearing that out of his own choice. I didn't realize this. His the, own volition. I didn't realize word? the, it is the word. I didn't realize that it was the uh, this combo until I got here. Yeah. And now I'm sort of stuck in it, so I'm going to own it. <laughs> All right. Well, let's get this show started. I thought we did. <laughs> <laughs> How, what? Tell me about your life. You've been having. We talked about your your meetings. You're on the Crystal Geyser tour, and yes. you had one yesterday. Yes, yeah, so lots of meetings. I mean, I think the biggest thing that's going on right now is uh, uh, you know, last night I played a you know high stakes poker. Did you win anything? I did not. I did not win. So those stakes. There's were, this thing now. People don't did always you know lose that, anything. Yeah, I lost money. How much it's a money? Poker game. <laughs> I don't want to disclose how much money. You I shouldn't lost. bring it up if you're not going to talk about but it. But I'm going to talk about other things about it. One, I, I was. The top four positions paid. Uh, okay, whatever that means. There's it's a tournament, and the in the in the top of your first place through fourth place, you get money. And, okay, okay, and okay. And the fifth place is called the bubble boy, because you're kind of on the bubble. You don't get you you place, but you don't get any money. Okay. And that is where I landed last night. It was a very frustrating. Ouch. Yeah. Okay. Ouch, because you may as well just be in the bot. You'd want to be I know, in the bottom. I know, because I wasted it's all that so time. Close, you can taste I it. I can see the stack of money that could have been mine. Who won? Uh, you know, I don't even know who won, because when I left, it was like a, a stalemate. Like it left? Like, I thought it was at your house. No, no, no. It was not at my house. Where was it? It was at a friend's house. Who, who's this friend? I'm not going to disclose that either. God, you're Why? Getting, you're keeping it Why so secret. Why are you talk? You're the one that is being <laughs> secretive. Listen, he runs an illegal casino. Out of his house, and if I what? reveal who it is, then the you know the DEA are going to get involved. An illegal casino out of his house. Yeah, so it's like it was kind of a big. It's a big game, you know. It's like, yeah. Well, well, anyway, it was it was a fun. I don't approve. I don't That's approve fair. of this activity. <laughs> well, listen, we all know we're Americans. Gambling is good. <laughs> Everyone knows it. What about what about you? What have you been up to? Oh well, it's it's for actors right now. It's a slow time, so I've been doing some what they call casting director workshops. This is where you pay a company to get in front of a casting director. Does the casting director get any of this money? Yes, they do. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> Why would they show up otherwise? Interesting. I'm just trying to see how this works. <laughs> I'm trying to decide actually if, if you it, want to become a casting yeah, director. Yeah, I mean, it sounds like it could be a good uh, a good job because you all you do is you show up. You show up. You make actors. Money, you make actors dance. pay. <laughs> yeah, actors dance around. Yes. Beg for jobs. Yes. Do you get jobs from it? I don't personally, ah, but people do. Sounds like a good investment. <laughs> <laughs> there are people. It is rumored. There right. is a myth. There's like a legend There's of a one legend person that, that got... one person, you know, gets, gets chosen out of these paid casting director workshops. All so, right. So, yeah, wh- so you pay 30 bucks. Yeah, what do you do when you're there? So you're given a scene and you prepare it at home as if you're auditioning for it. And then you go in the room with the casting director, you and the casting director and a reader, and then someone is filming you. Mm-hmm. And then you perform the audition. For All me. right. So it sounds like it's an audition. It's but an audition. There's no chance of a job. There's afterwards. no job that exists. It's a false audition. So you're auditioning for nothing. You're auditioning for for some job that someone else already did. Well, it sounds like <laughs> a really good use of your time. What? Uh, it is. It's what? Uh, what did you audition anything lately, or what was your latest so, fake audition? Oh, my latest fake audition. Well, <laughs> wait, that's funny. So it's funny that you should ask because 
Um, last weekend, I went in for a lovely casting director, a fellow who uh, who yeah. I've not met before. Uh-huh. Um, he sent me a scene from a previous CSI. That's okay. a network television show, procedural. Yeah. I'm sure people have heard of it. Some people might have heard of it. Um, and the role was for a young woman who has a genetic disorder Ooh. that causes... Emmy bait? <laughs> that what? what? Emmy bait, right? Emmy like bait. Emmy bait. Emmy bait. Emmy bait, yeah. Yes, Emmy bait. She has a genetic disorder which um, causes her to grow hair all over her body like a werewolf. Oh, maybe not Emmy bait. <laughs> it seems like a long suit. So you had to play. So she hides away from society all of her life, and then when she's questioned by the authorities about her brother's murder, she has a bag over her head. <laughs> She has a bag over her head? Yeah, so the... Did, the, you, did you do the scene with a bag over your head? No, I mimed it. Wow. I mimed well, taking the bag off. That's, that's what it means to be an actor. <laughs> um, and did you do a werewolf voice? No. Let, let me hear your werewolf voice. <laughs> Say, my brother's innocent. Well, I don't... In werewolf. My brother's innocent! Oh, that's pretty... What do you think? That's pretty exciting. Emmy? Emmy? That's pretty scary. <laughs> um, my brother! <laughs> how many uh, times have you auditioned for a character who is a werewolf? This will be my first and hopefully oh. my last. <laughs> now, here's a question. Could you say that you may like, for like Vampire Diaries, could you like say that you've played a vampire on CSI? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, maybe I could. Maybe I put it on my special skills. Your special, yeah, vampire, <laughs> werewolf. But what was funny about that this my workshop is that I was given this scene. First of all, I'm typically given comedic scenes, which I'm, I'm trying to move away from. I actually, my passion is drama. Mm-hmm. So... So I was like, oh, okay, this is good. It's a straight scene. But right. given my comedic background. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't believe that that was an it actual was, episode. It was an actual episode. But given my comedic background, it was very difficult for me to receive this scene with no irony, which it was given to me with no irony. Uh, if any Not- of our listeners played this role <laughs> on that CSI episode, please. Tell me. Drop like us a tweet there. and let us know what it was like playing a werewolf and how long, how many hours you were in makeup. Yeah. <laughs> I can't. So I was, I was given the task of auditioning for this very pleasant fellow with the, like, you know, I was putting on my best dramatic actress hat. I, I think if you were like a small budget production, yeah. you couldn't afford all the werewolf makeup. Yeah. The bag on the head thing is a pretty good solution. The bag on the head. But she takes the bag off of her head. Oh, in the so middle you still of the, have to do the makeup. Because the Mark Helgenberger oh. Oh. character lady t- talks her out of it in the span of two lines, but FYI. Oh, but she's, she's been hidden away her whole life. Like, she's like Nell. Remember that movie, Nell? Like, yes. Tay in the Wind? Yeah. Like, basically, she's a Nell, but with the added layer of being um, a genetic freak of nature. Well, like as a werewolf, like covered in hair, like she extend. It says the script oh. says she extends her hairy hands. <laughs> oh my! It does not really. Oh my god! Yes, yes. So well, I had to do. I had to do it. I had to do it. Vani, I really hope that you get cast in this role that's that, already been on the air for a casting director who isn't actually casting think, any jobs. I don't think this is the one. This well, wasn't the one where I got to show what I my strengths. Well, congratulations. Well, <laughs> it was great catching up. It was great catching up with you. Tweet your question, tweet your thoughts. Janie and Aaron won't disappoint. They'll answer it for you in talking points. All right, here we are for talking points. Another another star-studded edition of Talking Points. Where you tweet us some talking points, hence the name Walking points. I wonder if we'll ever get bored of this, uh, the, the adding the W. What if Twitter, like 20 years from now, Twitter is gone, and but be all the words that we have like created that from Twitter still exist. It'll be it'll be retro to use them, like like gag me with a spoon or oh, something. Oh yeah, like it'd be like oh yeah, tweet at me. <laughs> <laughs> People, all the all the kids, will be like, what does that mean? <laughs> Apparently, back in the office, I had this there's this company quaint called little social networking. <laughs> All right. We'll be dead, so it won't matter. <laughs> <laughs> so today we've been tweeted at by at Ugly Luciana. Mm-hmm. And she was reading about the American mom who sued over the Nutella, the Nutella case where it, she thought Nutella, which is the hazelnut spread, was touting itself as a healthy snack. And it turns out, like, I guess her kids, like, got plump on it. 
Uh, well, I have, I have two things to say. What are our thoughts on that? Well, here's my, my first this reaction. This like the whole litigiousness of our, but go on, yeah. My, my, my first thing I have to say is that hazelnuts as a nut. Are gross. Are one of my favorite. No, I love them. They're they are fantastic. Nothing are you, makes a salad what? better. Okay, first. Have you ever had them in a salad? Oh, it's so good. They are so God, good. Who are you? They're like the least favorite nut. No, they're. They are. They are America's least favorite nut. I mean, on a, have you what? had a cashew? Have you had a cashew? First of all, please tell me you've had a cashew. I, of course. First of all, we all know that a cashew is a legume, not a nut. Whatever. It still rocks. Actually, you know what? Uh, this is totally off topic, but um, <laughs> the you know that a cashew is related to the mango. They're actually in the same family. So if you're allergic to mangoes, you are also allergic to cashew nuts. What? Your wife is allergic to mangoes. She can yes. eat cashews. No, it's the same. Since when? Are, I, I know it's cashews. weird. I know. But let me go back to hazelnuts. First of all, they're amazing. They're delicious. I can't believe totally we just lost our our hazelnut sponsorship <laughs> with your with your claim that they're America's least favorite nuts. So well, let me just say right now. I just I, I know what I know. I know I can't I can't be disingenuous. I don't care how much money they gave us in ad revenue. <laughs> I can't so all, sell out. To I, all can't, our, I can't sell out. I to all of our listeners out there, uh, to all of our listeners out there, if, do you, who do you agree with? Do you think hazelnuts <laughs> are awesome, like like I do? Let us know. Or do you think yeah, they are us. the least favorite nut? Tweet us and we'll find out the truth. At Dr. Lawyer Cop and at Janie Haddad. What's that nut that's a, really it's like a large nut? Oh, like a filbert? No, it's like a Brazilian. A filbert? <laughs> oh, there's one nut that's way worse than a hazelnut. I love hazelnuts. So what? So Nutella is like a. It's kind of like a so peanut Nutella butter. So Nutella is like. Ba- it's not like a peanut butter. It's like it's like a chocolate. Well, I mean, it's a spread. spread. It's a spread. Yeah. You use it like peanut butter. And I don't know this case, so I'm going to ask you what this. You know about it? I know, I know you love your. You love your. Court I'm a TV. New, I know. I'm a news junkie. Here's what I. That I, is not news. I way. only know like. It's not news. I only know this case like in like the headlines version. Okay. Which is there was this like commercial. Where the mom is like, I don't have time to feed my kids a healthy snack, but luckily I can put Nutella on it and then it's done or whatever. And basically Mm -hmm. it's like you're feeding your child like a piece of cake for breakfast or like ice cream for breakfast. Okay. So, and they, and they're like talking about putting it on like a whole grain piece of bread and they sort of like equating it to like this healthful type food. And I guess this mom like got really mad about it and took them to court for false advertising and I think won or they settled or they were somehow they were like ruled in favor of like the public. Right. Thing. Well so but I also think like in general, like it's so weird like the things that people sue over in our country. Yeah, we're all idiots. The last week I was uh up in Northern California and at- <laughs> excuse me for living <laughs> And, uh, Must be nice. Listen, that's just the life okay, I live. Okay, so what happened? And I was at breakfast, and I wanted their. They had these like whole wheat uh, pancakes. Okay. And I was like, oh, these look really good. Like it's, you know, recipe, you know, homemade recipe. And I asked the waiter, I go, how are these pancakes? And he's like, oh, they're really, really good, um, but you don't want any syrup on them. What? And I said, and oh, you're I, like, you don't know me. I do. No, I said, no, I, I'm not a big syrup fan. I was like, oh, okay, that's great. And he goes, what wait, you, need, you like hazelnuts and you're not a syrup fan? I just don't want to pour a lot of syrup on. And so then what he says is, you need to put ice cream on them. <laughs> and I was like, no, I don't want ice cream on my pancakes. He goes, trust me, you will never not do it this way again. And he pushed and pushed and he convinced me. Did you me, sue him? <laughs> so no, I ordered pancakes with ice cream on top. For I like breakfast, this, I like this guy's style. I like this guy's style. It showed up, and it, I was like, "Oh my god!" It's like a big giant dessert. Dessert, like it's like it looks like a sundae or something <laughs> with pancakes on it. And and it was amazing. Let me ask. It was amazing. So, are you have you, are you converted? Yeah, I, honestly, I I think people out there and listen, if you're listening, next time you're making your kids pancakes, put skip ice the syrup. Cake. Don't a, use or Nutella. No, Nutella is bad no, for you. Ice cream is the Nutella. way to go. A great way, a great healthy <laughs> snack for kids is a tall stack with two scoops of really, really dense ice cream on top. Because it's like good dairy, good for the bones. Oh, yeah, calcium. Calcium. Uh, it really is good. It's one of those things you don't think it's good. And now I actually am trying to retrofit that to figure out ways to incorporate pancakes into other desserts. <laughs> you know, like take a pancake. A pancake and put it in a pie, a pancake pie? Yeah, or on top of a pie. Ooh, or a pancake cake. You put, you ice it. 
You oh, ice it. What if you made a bunch of pancakes and then put like frosting in between and that like, would be served good. it like it was a cake? Because guess what? I'm not. I don't like pancakes. What? I don't. So hold on. This whole thing started with you really bitching at me about how I didn't like hazelnut or how I liked hazelnuts. Sure. But really, sure. where are you to speak? Because you don't like pancakes. I eat hazelnuts fine. Okay, I get, I put them, you know, I get them down. How do you not like pancakes? They're just like really boring. Like after the third bite, like you know what it's all about. Well, have you had it with ice cream? No, but you I would def- try it. You should try that. <laughs> do you like waffles or are they the same problem? Eh, yeah. So what like is your savory. favorite breakfast food? I like eggy kind of things, oh. like savory. I'm savory. into savory. Oh, I see. All right, so here's how I feel about the Nutella thing is like yeah. if you – like, is, is, it, is this stuff, like, labeled, like, where it says, like, the sugar content of something? Like, it probably says, like, 45 grams of sugar on the label. Well, there's two things happening here. The real thing is that we – most of these things that are advertised, right, are – they want to imply as much as they can that they're good for you. That they're, like, whole foods and not processed foods. Right. So, like, it's everything from Nutella saying, oh, it's it's good for breakfast, which probably is true. I bet it tastes great. Yeah, it's tasty for breakfast. And there's like, you know, like Sunny Delight, all those commercials. Like, give your, like Sunny Delight is not really it's orange like juice. It's like soda, yeah. It's like soda, but they, but they kind of imply that it's, it's you know, good It's for orange you. colored. <laughs> so I feel like, here's my, I'm of two minds. I think we as, um, as humans should be smarter about it. Like. Well, read the labels. Yeah. I mean, read but labels. that said, those commercials do imply if you don't, you know, if you're not good at reading labels that those are, you know, that Sunny Delight is orange juice you know, and that Tella is You know what commercials I have the most problem with? What's that? Pharmaceutical ads. Yeah. I think they should be outlawed again. Well, I, I, I... They used to not be allowed on the air, but now they glut up the air and they've convinced our society that we're so sick and needy of these pills that are just, you know, like... Making these fat cats rich. Yeah. Have you ever seen, like, in magazines, the pharmaceutical ads that are, like, a two-page spread of, yeah. like, a, an eight-point font? Yeah, I'm disgusted by these people. Here's my question. Has anyone anywhere ever read those two pages? I hope somebody is reading it and monitoring this No stuff. one has ever read that. No one has ever read that. Well, that's my feeling on it. So. Well, I think that woman uh, wins. I don't know how to wrap that up. <laughs> We all win. We all win with pharmaceuticals. We all win. I got to go take a pill now. Yeah. Well, great talking point. Great talking point. No one judges faster than Jamie and Aaron. It's snap judgment. All right. Here snap we are. judgment. Our snap judgments are our final segment where we, uh, we throw things at each other, ideas, concepts. It's my favorite part because I get to be judgmental yeah. and, and, I, and it's condoned. Yeah. It's encouraged. <laughs> Not just condoned. It's encouraged. You have to be judgy here. I have to be judgy. Or it doesn't work. And you have to be judgy as quickly as you can be. <laughs> it kind of gets stressful. All right. Let's start off. You go first. You want an easy one or a hard one? Easy one. An easy one. All right. Aromatherapy. I have I I want to believe I want to believe. No, it's, no it's, we all know it's a joke. I like things that smell good, so <laughs> I'm down with that. If all that <laughs> here's the part that's not not real therapy. The therapy part in that is ridiculous. Yeah, that it was be someone called, like packaging it. Well. Yeah, it should be called aroma pleasantness, a, aroma <laughs> recreation, or something. Or like you know that good smells make you make it a better environment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I hate aromatherapy as a concept. Okay, okay. All right. All right, um, here's yours. A mother eating her placenta. Oh. That's a thing. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Then I'm totally for it. Uh, you had a crazy, apparently it's in. It's done in the wild. Let me ask you this. Does, yeah. does the father ever have to eat the placenta? No, because it has something to do with like the nutrients for the mother. You know what? I'm not going to, I'm not going to stand in the way of any mother. Like, listen, there's not a war on, on women in this podcast. If they want to eat a placenta, go right ahead. But maybe that is the war on women, is you, convincing them that eating the placenta is You eat how, it raw or is it prepared? Well, you can have like pills made, but some people like throw it in a skillet. For real? For reals. If you guys, anyone out there listening has like a good recipe. Like purists. Re- if anyone out there has a good recipe for a placenta, <laughs> make sure you. I've been looking for one. <laughs> I've been because li- I go to a lot of potlucks. <laughs> Yeah, and I want to take a like a placenta casserole, but I don't want to be like because of the nutrients. Because of the nutrients. Yeah, all right, you're doing. That is so foul. <laughs> is ninety dollars for three bras too much money? <laughs> <laughs> I 
No, I spend more than that on one bra. What? I'm actually, that's funny that you asked me this. That's a weird snap judgment. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> because but, obvi- I obviously think it is too much. I have a, um, you don't know this about me, and it's funny that you put that on your snap judgments, but I have a bra. Um, a bra session? Bra session. <laughs> like, I am, I love French bras, and I only buy French bras. I did not know this about you. Yes. We and might be best bras. friends, but we don't know. We don't know our, everything. About our under things. No, we don't know. I mean. <laughs> I like German underpants. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> yeah, I'm a French bra enthusiast, and you could, like, you can maybe get one for $90 on sale. Wow, I had no idea. They are superior. I was in an argument with somebody. I'm not going to say who. And I thought perhaps. <laughs> was it your wife? It might be. But $90 <laughs> for three bras seemed like an excessive amount of money. So, see, I think that she's getting ripped off. I think she's buying sub tier, sub substandard bras. They might have been sports bras even. Well, sports bras are another they story. Were, they, were, they weren't like sub. Sports bras are not the same. But I don't know. It seems crazy. All right. Go after you. Okay. Um, lunar travel. I lunar travel yeah there's an obsession with like we're gonna have vacations to the moon these uh, days like yeah. in five weeks <laughs> i guess my snap judgment is that i'm not i'm not a big fan of it yeah i don't get the fascination i just feel like uh, how's that a good vacation anyway yeah you're spending a million dollars sure to go yeah already that seems overpriced too much but when you get there what do you do you can't really do anything no you just gotta look you, you just float, get to gawk you can float around i would rather pay you know, a hundred dollars okay. to feel weightless. I agree with that. I like, like, whenever you see that on TV, like yeah. the gravity yeah. chambers or the anti gravity chambers. That's what I'd be okay those with. Those look fun, but I think they make you feel nauseous. I don't get uh, seasick or motion sickness in any way. I can, I've never had that problem. Mm. So, mm. all right, well, let's humble throw in, brag. Let me throw into you food samples at grocery stores. On board. Ugh, gross. Make it better. No. The worst. A food sample, it's gross to you? Uh, yeah, because it's like sitting out and people are like touching it. And... It's not been sitting oh. out for that. Uh, who's touching it? There's like toothpicks like, in it. I know, but like I, do you trust everyone to not double toothpick? You know, like they're like, I don't know. I just feel like it's unsupervised. I don't want food in a public space like that. So when you go to like a happy hour at a bar, you don't eat the nuts in the in the bowl? Because some people are against that, too, and I'm like, get over is that, it. Is that a snap judgment? Are you asking me a snap judgment on nuts in a bowl? <laughs> nuts in a bowl, happy hour at a bar. Refuse. No. Refuse. What? Even, I have one even exception. Even if they're your favorite hazelnuts? <laughs> I have one exception, and it's not hazelnuts. What? You know what it is? What? You should know this about me. Okay. Whole peanuts, where you break them open, and you throw the shell on the floor. Ooh, I like boiled peanuts. You ever get boiled peanuts at a bar? When... No, I'm not from the South or wherever <laughs> it is that you eat boiled peanuts. I've never had a boiled peanut. Well, then you're missing out on I, a I do like pleasure peanuts, in so life. I guess it might be good. No, but I, I will if it's a, at a bar and you break open. So I know that the nut hasn't been like someone's grubby paw hasn't reached in Everyone there. Everyone who has that phobia is wrong because no one's ever died or gotten pneumonia or whatever from like eating some happy hour nuts. And that I'm like we so know of. like tired. That we know of. of. Ugh. People are so freaking precious. I'm just over it. All right, that's been our episode. I can't. Wait. You are like psychotic. <laughs> you are like psychotic. Just go adjust your French bra. Um, another great episode of uh, uh, Jane and Aaron does Hollywood. It was great dozing Hollywood. With we you. dozed it really well this time. How uh, you does? How how you do, dozen? How I wonder you how many dozen? people. I wonder how many people are going to be Did like. It? You got the. Oh, so your, grammar's wrong. Grammar. your grammar's wrong. Oh, there's oh, that person you're, again. You're a TV writer and you don't know how to use your grammar. <laughs> um, if you guys have any thoughts for us, you can email us at Janie and Aaron at gmail. Dot com. Dot com. You do need the dot com. And you can also tweet at us. At, oh, yeah. What's your Twitter handle? It's at Janie Haddad. Mine's at Dr. Lawyer Cop. Thanks we, for listening, everybody. Thanks for listening and we look forward to hearing from you. See you next week. You've been listening to our little pod called Janie and Aaron does Hollywood. It doesn't really rhyme.